thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I have a link for you to try out Premium for free, so hang out till the end. Facebook has recently announced their own hugely controversial digital currency called Libra, as well as a wallet to keep that currency in called Calibra. Everyone from banks to financial regulators and privacy advocates are very concerned about this project. So in the 53rd episode of the Story Behind series, let's talk about what exactly Libra is and why it is so damn controversial. You know, beyond them just dripping off the logo of a competing tech product. Real quick before we start, if you want to see more in-depth analysis of tech companies, especially from a business perspective, consider subscribing to TechAltar. It's easiest to explain Libra by walking you through what it would be like for you to use Libra and then explaining what happens in the background as we go. So let's do that. So let's say in a year or two from now, when Libra is out, you want to get some Libra. How do you do it? You have two options. One, you buy from a random person who already has some Libra. And it's just a currency that anyone can theoretically trade with. Or two, more likely, you go to an officially appointed Libra exchange, of which Facebook says there will be many around the world. You pay them regular money, let's say euros, and then this exchange will start two processes. First, they will create new Libra that they will give to you. They're the only ones who are authorized to do that, by the way. And second, they'll take your euros and invest it into something that is known to hold its price well. Probably government bonds, maybe gold, maybe stocks from big companies, who knows. Basically, they throw your money onto a big pile with all of the other money they have collected and promise to keep it safe somewhere. And voila, now you have Libra. By the way, selling it would work in the exact same way as well. You could either sell it to someone privately or go to an exchange, which Facebook promises will give you real money for it. They will take your Libra and destroy it, and they will take a part of their big pile of money and give it back to you in form of regular money, like euros, for example. So that's how you buy and sell Libra. Now notice three important implications. One, the Libra Association has complete control over how much Libra there is. Unlike with Bitcoin, where Bitcoins have to be created by mining, the Libra Association is basically like a central bank that can just print and destroy Libras whenever it wants to. Two, the association controls how much Libra is worth. They will use their exchanges to literally set a buying and selling price for it worldwide. And three, the association will have a reserve to make sure that they have enough money to pay back anyone who wants to take their money out of the system, giving the currency a sort of trust and stability that most cryptocurrencies don't have. Now, given that you know how to buy Libra, you probably want to store it somewhere, and that is what a Libra account is for. An account of Libra is basically just a public and a private key, which are just two very long strings of characters. Think of them as a login and a password, essentially. Facebook says that these accounts will be pseudonymous, which means that they're not directly tied to your name or where you live, that kind of stuff. And you can have theoretically as many of them as you want. So that's an account. And now that you have one with Libras on it, it is time for the next step, which is starting to pay for stuff with it. Your transactions, of course, have to go through the system and somebody has to process and validate them. Unlike in so-called permissionless systems, like with Bitcoin, where every miner in the system, so theoretically anyone in the world with a computer can validate transactions, that's what mining really is. In a permissionless system, like Libra, for example, transactions are validated by trusted authorities only, who are, of course, the members of the Libra Association. Facebook says that they eventually want to move to a permissionless model as well, meaning that anyone can join the network and do validations as well. However, apparently they don't know how to do that at scale yet, efficiently and quickly enough. So at least for the next five years, they say that the big guys will have to do all of the validations. Maybe they never want to move to a permissionless model and it's just a fake promise, but at least for now, that's what we know. And that's basically it. That's how Libra at its core works. You have a simple account and then the Libra Association takes care of everything else, including creating and destroying Libras as well as processing all of the transactions. It's really a hybrid between cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and regular so-called fiat currencies like euros or the US dollar, as it uses cryptographic technologies, similar to those of Bitcoin, but is currently managed much like a regular currency, with a strong central authority calling all of the shots. If you want to go more into detail on the technical stuff, I've actually linked to both the white paper and a really good explainer video from Gary Sims. They're both in the description below. But in this video, I would like to focus on the implications of Libra. And I'll start with the positive stuff. 
if Libra really comes to the market as envisioned, which is a huge if. There's no guarantee that government regulators will let it pass or that Facebook will even be able to build all the things that it says it will be able to build. But if it happens, Libra could make payments go across borders basically instantly at very low cost, reliably and securely for anyone who has access to the internet without a need for a bank, which would be huge. Just imagine a worker from say the Philippines earning money in Europe and being able to send it back home from their phone safely without any significant fees. Facebook estimates the average cost of remittances at 7% globally and they disproportionately hurt poor people the most. Libra could essentially get rid of that. Libra could also be a safe way for people to store money in countries where walking around with a lot of cash is dangerous or where the local currency is going through hyperinflation, for example, like what's happening in Venezuela right now. People could put their savings into Libra freely and not have to worry about it losing much value or getting stolen. And finally, Libra will be built into every conceivable Facebook product ever, allowing for easy peer-to-peer -peer transactions. It'll be accepted by eBay, Uber, Lyft, all of which are Libra Association members, as well as many other vendors, and users will be able to convert Libra to local currency at an exchange easily, without having to worry about getting ripped off. In other words, if everything goes according to plan, Libra could theoretically become functionally far superior to our current payment systems. And while that is true, I think basically everything else about Libra is incredibly worrisome. For a start, the management structure of Libra is, in my opinion, pretty insane. See, one of the core promises of cryptocurrencies, the original ones like Bitcoin, is that there is no management, there is no governance. Anyone can join the network, make payments, own Bitcoin. Anyone can verify every transaction that has ever been made on the Bitcoin. It's true personal freedom. That creates new problems like how do you block people from paying for nasty things like guns and violence and nasty porn and all that kind of stuff. But it is true freedom. Libra does not provide that. Libra is very much a managed and centralized currency, but unlike traditional currencies, the authority managing it is not a central bank, which is a government agency that citizens have some level of control over, which is at least theoretically appointed to serve the people of a country, but rather an association of self-appointed big private companies that regulate themselves and themselves only. This association is headquartered in Switzerland, which makes it extra difficult for any national law enforcement to target it, and it is actually even more powerful than a typical central bank, as it can not only create and destroy currency at will, as well as manipulate its value, but it's also the sole payment processor in the system, at least for now. In other words, an organization that has zero accountability to anyone has absolute control over all major functions of the currency. So, since I've been talking about it so much, let's actually explore this association a bit. Its current 28 members are mostly large US-based private companies which were literally handpicked by Facebook. It's an invite-only system, so Facebook and its buddies decide who gets to join later, and the entry criteria appears to be that members, for the most part, have to be extremely large and rich companies. Facebook unironically calls this a quote-unquote diverse set of organizations because they've thrown in a token charity or two to look good, I guess. There are currently no clear answers given to many of the most important questions, like why these companies are uniquely well suited to run the world economy in the first place, uh, what happens to these companies if one of them misbehaves, for example, or how the public can hold them accountable if anything bad happens. But I guess that's by design. Now, there are two more aspects that experts seem to worry about. One, how much control does Facebook have over the system? And two, privacy. Because I guess the default assumption with Facebook is that they want to have all of the control and none of the privacy. So it is kind of surprising then that according to the currently released plans, Facebook seems to be voluntarily relinquishing some of the control over Libra. See, they could have done all of the payment processing themselves, but they chose to share that responsibility with other companies, and they chose to make Libra relatively private by using pseudonymous keys for accounts. Of course, they do have a plan for controlling the system and for gathering as much data as possible, but to understand how that would work, we have to take a look at Calibra, their newly announced wallet. 
A crypto wallet is basically an app that lets users access cryptocurrencies. Think of it like a specialized banking app showing users a balance and enabling transactions. Developers can play around with Libra using the command line interface, but 99% of the population will use a wallet. And while Libra is technically an open system that anyone could build competing wallets on, Facebook is betting big on Calibra becoming the dominant one. For one, Calibra has a head start of at least one or two years, so it will likely be more feature-rich than competitors. Plus, it will be built into every conceivable Facebook product ever, likely making it the default solution for peer-to-peer -peer transactions over WhatsApp and Messenger, as well as purchases over Instagram's new commerce platform or Facebook Marketplace. My last two videos are both about how big tech companies like Microsoft and Google can use and kind of abuse their dominance with one product to build a market dominance for another product. Um, you can watch both of those videos somewhere here. But long story short, Facebook is perfectly positioned to make Calibra the default way most users around the world access their Libra currency. And that's really all it needs. Because Calibra, of course, is everything but private. They have openly declared that they will follow standard banking procedures, including verifying the identity of every Calibra user with identity checks, as well as learning where they live. That's information that's mandatory for banks to collect to avoid money laundering and stuff. And you can bet that Calibra will also closely monitor your payments to learn about your habits, to offer you loans and insurance, or just show you helpful tips around what you spend your money on. In other words, Calibra, a company that is owned 100% by Facebook, can have all of the payment data it wants. Now, Facebook has promised that they are not going to mix Calibra payment information with Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram social information. But then again, they've made similar promises like that in the past before, and they broke them. So should you care about that promise? Probably no. They promised that they would never mix WhatsApp and Facebook data after the acquisition, but then they changed their minds and started merging the two together, and even threw Instagram into the mix as well, despite regulators suing them multiple times for it and WhatsApp founders leaving the company over it. Promises are easy to make, but typically don't last very long within Facebook when breaking them appears to make them massive amounts of money. And I think that's a pretty good place to wrap it up. If you would like to know more about how cryptocurrencies work and why they are important, I would actually recommend watching this great beginner course on Skillshare. It's a really easy to follow deep dive on both the technology and the economic side of things, and it even covers moral and ethical aspects. You can watch it for free using my link in the description, which will get you two months of premium access to all of Skillshare's over 25,000 classes for free, including courses on everything from video editing to photography, marketing, and much more. So sign up with the link in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one.